Yeah. Dr. Brian. Dr. Dwight. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty well. All right. Other than uh, the major or biggest cyber attack that's happened in our What did you say? This is history. basically a what? A dumpster fire. A dumpster fire. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's probably a pretty good uh, yeah. description. For those who are unaware, I think we're on day 11 of the largest cyber attack on the American healthcare system that has ever happened, causing the most chaos all around the country from Ohio to New Jersey to Florida to Hawaii. Actually, I'm not sure. What, what day is it? Hello. Apparently, this happened on March. Sorry, the attack happened on February 21. Oh. And it was a cyber attack on a company called Change Healthcare, okay. um, which is a clearinghouse. So um, for anyone who doesn't know, right? Yeah, yeah. The clearinghouse sits in between hospitals. So hospitals, doctors, uh, physical, physical therapists. therapists. Yep. So um, when, when I had a clinic, I'd see patients and we would submit our claims through a clearinghouse platform, which then sends that claim to the insurance company. Now, the reason that we pay the clearinghouse platform is so that the patient's information is protected. They propose it as a airtight system so none of the patient's data can get leaked. So you know all that paperwork you sign. You go to see the dentist, <laughs> yeah. the doctor, the optician. You have to sign that stack of papers. That's basically the assurance of the provider to you that they're not going to share, disclose. It's guaranteeing your, the privacy of your information there. Right. And so that clearinghouse that sits in between doctors and hospitals from getting paid from these insurance companies, um, that is supposed to be a infallible, of course, nothing is infallible, but the idea is that they are making money because they are saying we are going to safeguard this information so it doesn't get into the wrong hands. And of course, however, with the cyber attack, it's gotten into the wrong hands. And I believe Change Healthcare, which is, is it United Healthcare owns Change? Yeah. So according to this article by the Washington Post, Change Healthcare, um, which processes over $1.5 trillion a year in healthcare charges yeah. and is the largest clearinghouse in the country. Again, this is a clearinghouse is the, comp the, the entity that stands in between hospitals and doctors so getting paid drugs, from the insurance company. Surgeries, therapy, um, doctor's visits, x-rays, MRIs, you name it, the whole system. So what's interesting though is that the Justice Department tried to block United Healthcare, which is a huge, yeah, UHC. UHC. If you've heard of it, it's one of the biggest private health insurance companies. So out that's there. interesting because the Justice part, where the, the federal government tried to block the purchase because um, it was considered to be uh, a violation of antitrust, but it didn't. The purchase went through. Right. Uh, so thus creating a monopoly situation, essentially, right? But. You know, when it comes to recently JetBlue and what Spirit, the, and Spirit mm -hmm. uh, they said, no, that transaction can't go through because if you allow those two companies to merge, that's too much of a... What's ironic, monopoly. though, is it's such a small industry compared to healthcare. Yeah, and the healthcare I mean, affects so many people. How many claims a year was it that Optimus Processing? They, according to this article, it says that this clearinghouse processes 15 billion... <laughs> Claims. Each claim is yeah. an encounter with a healthcare right. provider. And from what we're aware of, it's maybe one in three patients' data has been breached. Uh, uh, well, according to the article, they're saying it's approximately 50% oh of all the claims in the U.S. <laughs> it's and, worse than I thought. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. why is this such a big deal? Well, apparently, to the hospitals that are involved, Mm -hmm. The hospitals can still operate. It's the, the, the hack is not affecting Internal. hospitals internally being able to dispense yeah. medications. But as soon as you're talking about going out into the community, uh, CVS, Walgreens, uh, anywhere you get drugs, Costco. If Change Healthcare is involved with processing the payment for your medications, you might be having problems getting your medications. Yeah, and I mean, where I'm from, Cleveland, uh, I'm very aware by the recent articles that it's affecting a lot of the neighborhoods out there. So um, yeah, it's concerning, very, very concerning. Um, yeah, what's most interesting to me though, 
is that it seems as though um, a hacker group has been identified. It's, did it say in one of the articles? Yeah, I, did, I, it, I missed that. Yeah, it says uh, March 1st, um, alleged hackers, a group known as ALPHV or Black Hat, received a $22 million transaction that some say is from United, but United will not comment on that. Huh. But that was back on March 1st, and it's already the 5th. So um, it just begs the question of how do you stop these cyber attacks from happening? And who is really benefiting from these attacks? Well, Because where's the money, right? Where we got to follow the money. Yeah, and again, right, if... if it's the clearinghouse that usually is, is like the go-between between between hospitals, clinicians getting paid, and the insurance company, which is holding on to the money. Mm -hmm. um, ultimately, there's a, there's a block in that payment. And ostensibly, that's inconvenient for the doctors, but when it's affecting a hospital system, yeah, that's I mean, a, that's a big problem. Yeah, there's art. We can reference articles all day, but there are clinics, private practices. I believe you mentioned in New Jersey, where uh, the guy's going back to paper charting, and it's just inconceivable. Um, when I first started my business, I was doing something called CMS fifteen hundred forms, just paper charts. I was still figuring it out, but it was only like several a day, and it takes about three or four months to get paid from those. So in other words, yeah. when you see a patient, you, you take care of them in your clinic, you mm -hmm. um, document the visit, but you have to fill out this federal form, um, and it's a standard federal form. Mm -hmm. It's not quite as bad as filling out your income tax paperwork, but there's, <laughs> there's a certain amount of detail. It's a lot, though. And that has to yeah. get sent out to the insurance company, mm -hmm. and the insurance company, if you send it a paper copy... Which I did. It's going to take, yeah, a month, three months. Three to four on average. Now, the idea was that if you do it electronically and there's this electronic clearinghouse that can hold all that electronic information and then decide when it's okay to push the funds through, right? Yep. Um, but it sounds like, you know, according to this, um, that, that, you know, they talked to this Mary Mayhew person who's the president and CEO of the Florida Hospital uh, Association. And her concern is that in Florida, in, since this has all happened, you know, she's projecting that hundreds of millions of dollars in weekly billings have dried up. Damage could soon hit a billion dollars. And the problem is these small to medium-sized hospitals in Florida, this is just Florida. Just Florida. They have built their operations around daily payments for the care that they provide. Mm -hmm. And so what that means, when that comes to a screeching halt, they, and we've been on this for more than a week and a half now, those hospitals don't have a whole lot of margin to work with. Yeah. So How do you retain your employees if you can't get paid? You can't pay them. Right. I mean, larger hospital systems, they could ride it out, right? Maybe. If they've got reserves. But the big concern is that, you well, know... Here's the crazy thing, uh, what the insurance company's solution is. There's a uh, Diana Holmes, a therapist in Attleboro, Massachusetts. She received an offer letter from Optum to pay her twenty dollars a week, while they figure out this cyber attack. Twenty dollars a week. Twenty dollars a week. Uh, wait, I remember though. Didn't it say that she normally brings in revenue of about four thousand? Four thousand in claims per week, and so their offer, in place of the four thousand dollars in claims, is was to loan her twenty dollars. Twenty bucks. Yeah. Here's your Starbucks for the day. Yeah. Not even. Not even. They won't even last a week. Yeah, they won't get you with the Starbucks, <laughs> I guess, right? Three drinks. Yeah, it's it's concerning to say the least. But then you you bump those numbers up to larger hospitals, like um, um, they're they're loaning out four thousand dollars compared to roughly five hundred thousand dollars. That's less than one percent. So how do these places survive? It's. I mean. It's, it's, Concerning. I think one one point that I really like that um, Mary Mayhew, I think the, the yeah. CEO of the Florida Hospital Association, she made a very good comment. She said, you know, these larger hospital systems are probably going to be okay because they have enough resources and reserves. Sure. But for most community hospitals who are in a, of much thinner margins and do not have those resources, they're being victimized by this attack. And ultimately, it's because of an attack on a company that created its own vulnerabilities because of its marketplace dominance. In other words, it is this 
behemoth Monster. that created it's, it's an easy target yeah and the problem is when you have a big easy target like that when it gets hit everything comes to a screeching halt so the problem is again as she's saying it's these small medium-sized hospitals Private who are, are going to be yeah. in a disastrous situation yeah and i feel bad for those individuals i mean having been there myself i couldn't imagine if i still had my clinic what would i be thinking yeah yeah, this is this is definitely going to make it harder for the uh, mm -hmm. the 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 few private practices that are around. I mean, yeah. But even more so, the future of healthcare. Like, where does this take us? Well, I think we've talked about this before many times. How you can't rely or expect the insurance company to be looking out for your best interest. You have to do your homework. You have to find out like why is it the insurance company is making my doctor do all these prior authorizations to get the <laughs> MRI that I want, that I need. Yeah, and some... Right? The medication that you need, that your doctor says you need. Why are we having to jump to these hoops for the insurance company? Yeah, and some of these advantage plans drive me crazy because they say you save you, mo they save you money, but your tradition for Medicare, for example, they will approve everything. You don't have to get prior approval. But with these advantage plans where these CEOs are making millions, you have to get approved for everything. We, we need to have a discussion about this on the next time. Yeah, we're definitely. Here. definitely. Um, and yeah. we'll definitely talk about Medicare, Medicare Advantage, because it's confusing to me. Sure. And uh, I'm not quite old enough for Medicare yet. I still have about 10 years to go. <laughs> Don't tell me. You've got a long time. I got a couple years. Go. Yeah, yeah. But it does yeah. mean we can't try and understand. Or help you understand. Yeah. We're all getting closer to it. Mm -hmm. And we um, have parents and family who are there. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a really good point. Yeah, because I always try to help my family out with the questions and. You know, it's amazing what I've learned over the years. So yeah, that's not a it's not a straightforward situation. No, very confusing, very gray. So, but the big question is: is why are these CEOs making millions? Well, you know, the healthcare system is what it is. Going down and down. Patients are paying more and more. Patients are getting less and less, as are hospitals, healthcare providers in general. And to sum it up, uh, my uh, my mind says just follow the money. Follow the money. Yeah. Well. Dr. Brian, thanks uh, again for yeah. raising these interesting questions. And again, it, it is a dumpster fire. Hopefully the next time we get together, it'll all be resolved. Yeah, and if you have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to reach out and ask anything because we're here to learn as well. All right. Until next time. Aloha. See you in the clinic. Yep.